We're now ready to start solving some basic exponential equations. We'll be coming back to exponential equations later in this chapter when uh, the bases aren't quite so cooperative. Today we're going to get some nice bases. And so you've solved these before. This should look familiar. Typical, if it's an exponential equation, it means we're solving for a variable that's in the exponent. So if I give you an expression like that and I say solve for x, how on earth are you going to attack it? Well, you may remember a goal from the past called making common bases. If you need to, you may want to grab one of my little pink tables of the powers of numbers that's back on the wall. However, I won't let you use it come test time. You're in college now. What you're looking for is you're trying to find a way to rewrite 144 and 12 so they're both the same base to a power. You must make, keep them as the same number or make them smaller. You cannot make them larger. So obviously 144 and 12 have something in common, namely 144 is 12 squared. So I'm going to choose to make that 12 squared and then of course I have to keep the power on the outside. I also want to get the right hand side to be 12 to a power. So when I bring that up to the numerator, so I can't have 12 on the bottom, since I'm bringing it up, negative power. In this case, a negative 1, since it had no other exponent. The 2x minus 3 is still on the outside. Now, rules of exponents say I should do what? I have a 2, 12 squared here with an x plus 2 outside. When you have a power raised to another power, yes, rules of exponents say we multiply. So on the right-hand side, I'm also multiplying negative 1 times that 2x minus 3, so I'll get negative 2x plus 3. Okay, the goal is that once you get the two bases equal, then if the, you know the base numbers are equal and the whole expressions are supposed to be equal, that means the exponents have to also be equal. So you can now set the exponents equal and go ahead and solve which is now basic algebra 1, add 2x over would give us 4x, subtract 4 would give us negative 1, and we'll end up with a nice little negative 1 fourth. And you've solved a nice exponential equation. Let me run one more by you just for good measure, and with something with some numbers that maybe aren't quite so nice, 12 and 144 were fairly obvious. This one won't be. I'm taking 1 64th to the 5 minus x and then doing the cube root of 256 to the x power. Okay, the big question on this one is what on earth is the common base? There are actually two common bases here. You might find you have to search the pink sheet for this one. You can, they are both 2 to a power, and they are both 4 to a power. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with 4 because that won't make me have such big exponents, but really both of them would work fine. Most of you don't tend to realize that 1 64th is, I put it up here, 4 cubed is 64, or the 4th is 256. Hmm, I think that's going to find our common base. So, I'm going to change 64, but it, in my right, I'm just writing 4 cubed. I have to bring it up, so instead, no, I need to do 4 to the negative 3 power, since I brought the fraction up. And here, 256, I'm going to rewrite that as 4 to the 4th. Now, oh, what do I do, <coughs> excuse me, to turn a exponent? <coughs> into a, excuse me, a root into an exponent. And so I would go, oh, well, that's 4 to the 4 thirds to the x. And so over here on the left side, I can multiply my powers. That would be negative 15 plus 3x. So in reality now, if I have the same bases, I can say negative 15 plus 3x equals 4 thirds x. Okay, up to you. Do you want to deal with fractions? Do you want to ditch the fractions? 
Well, I'm going for, hey, let's ditch the fractions. So I would times that by 3, which would give me negative 45 plus 9x equals 4x. Uh, I think I'll remove x's to the left, so that would be 5x equals 45. And if I divide by 5, x equals 9. Got to admit, that's pretty sweet. Not often do those come out to a nice whole number answer. So that's basic exponential functions. That's also going to be the bottom step of some of our log problems next time. Okay. Finally then, one last piece you're going to put together on exponential functions are some real world problems. You'll need to grab one of those formula sheets at the back of the room. Uh, the form primary formula you're going to be using today is just the standard formulas for exponential growth and decay. And it's typically, I believe, I probably have it used, labeled as human population or business type situations. If it's involving investments growing, the value of something you own growing or decaying in value, that type of thing, this one's very common. It's written as y equals a times the quantity 1 plus or minus r to the t. You'll see on the formula sheet and on every formula I will give you in this chapter, the number on the left is always the final amount. The first number on the right side of the equal sign is always the initial amount, how much you start with. That is a 1 for 100%, plus or minus the rate of growth or decay. Sometimes this is given to you as a decimal, sometimes it's given to you as a fraction. And then, of course, t is time. Okay, you have to decide whether to use the plus or minus. If it's growing, you have to use a plus. If it's decaying, you have to use a minus. Okay, so we are going to do a sample problem here. We uh, know that heavy equipment, meaning large equipment, earth-moving stuff, bulldozers, cranes, that type of equipment, stuff, equipment, I can talk here, loses val you loses one fifth of its value each year. If you wanted to, you can translate one fifth into twenty percent. I don't care. Your your book problems tend to use the fractions on for today's problems. So it, ha it loses one fifth of its value each year. Um, an earth mover initially cost $125,000. The question is, first question, how much will it be worth after two years? You will need to punch that, first of all, set up the equation before we try to solve it. Obviously, calculators are going to be involved here. So, we always have a final amount. What is our initial amount? How much was it worth to start with? 125000 Okay, the key thing is what goes in the parentheses. So, is it growing in value or losing value? It says it loses one-fifth, so since it loses, we're going to subtract, and in this case, they told us one-fifth. You could also be subtracting 20%, same thing. To the T, that is our normal, that's, I'm trying to create our general formula here, so that's really 125,000 times four-fifths to the T power. Can I take 125,000 times four-fifths? And the answer would be absolutely not! That four-fifths has an exponent on it. You cannot times 125,000 times it ever, 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 ever. Don't do it. Okay, to answer our question here, that's my general formula I was after. To answer our question, it wants to know what it will be worth after two years. Okay, yes, you could easily throw two into that and throw it in your calculator, and you'll have the answer. Yes, we can type it in. 
I also want to point out though, and because we're going to use graphing here for the second question in a moment, I also want to point out that if you go to your calculator and you punch it in to a graph equation, uh, punch it in up here as your function. Notice I have 125, actually I should have done that, let me not do that. 125 to the 4 fifths. Now, your calculator won't take t for time. It wants x's. Since it says f of x, your variable has to be in x's. Be sure you always put x up there. Do not put the number you desire. Okay. If you were back on a calculator page, go ahead and type it in exactly as is. In fact, probably I should have done that too. If you're doing this on a calculator page, yes, you could just go 125,000 times 4 fifths. And in this case, we wanted two years to take it the second power. And yes, we would get $80,000. That's fast. However, I also wanted you to get, remind you that you can also get that value by using your calculator. Now, granted, I can't see anything graphed here, but I know I put that function in it, up there in F1. So I can go Control T and switch to a table. In this case, I wanted to see it after two years, so right there is also my 80,000. So if you were going to do a number of different values, your table would be the fastest way to get the values out of there. Okay, remember to get out of there, you just control T it again and it goes away. Okay, we're going to come back in a second and ask a second question here that's going to require more intense use of our calculator. And the second question is, when will it be worth $50,000. When will it have dropped that low? Okay. That one's not so obvious on how to solve. You could attempt to go to table, but when we were back there in table, I'll pop that back up again. When we were in table, you see 50000 on there? Not exactly to kind of tell approximately where it falls, but I can't get a more exact answer. We're not going to find values out of the table. If you recall, when we want to know when it hits an exact value, we use the intersect function. Okay, but to intersect requires two equations in our calculator. So I have to hit tab and I have to type in the number I'm trying to intersect with, which is 50,000. Okay, that's going to put a horizontal line across the 50,000. Why can't I see it? They're both in there and I can't see either equation. Well, hopefully somebody's out there going, well, look at your window. You're only graphing between negative 10 and positive 10. The y-axis is going between negative 6.67 and positive 6.67. This graph's nowhere close to that. So we need to think about this a second with common sense. Okay, what are our x-coordinates in this problem representing? That would be time. Our y coordinates are value. Okay, so what is our time frame running between? We're talking about not, not years as in 1999 or 2016. We're talking about time as in how many years from whenever we bought this earth mover. So our time is only going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you know, we could guess maybe we need it to go from maybe 0 to 10 years here. Okay, our y coordinates are our value. Okay, where is this value starting? It's starting at 125,000. And is it going up or down? Well, it's coming down in value. So we know the high side is 125,000. And it's, in our case, we're looking for 50,000. We need something below that. So you're going to have to go change your window. On exponential and logarithmic functions, zooming doesn't work a good portion of the time because in this case, look, our x's are only changing by ones, but our y's are changing by thousands. When you zoom in and zoom out, it zooms both axes by the same amount, and so it tends to be very ineffective. So I'm going to highly suggest to you that you get good at going to menu, window zoom, go up to window settings, Looks like our x-axis is probably fine from negative 10 to positive 10. But our y-axis, I'm going to go 0. High side was 125,000. I always shoot over any numbers I'm working with just to have some leeway. 
I'm gonna go 150,000. And hey, wow, look at that. There's my graph and my beautiful red line ready to be intersected. Now I can simply go menu, analyze graph, intersect, move over here to the, actually I guess I am on the left side of the intersection, I'll just press enter then, and then I will scroll to the right hand side of the intersection where I will see some weird answer. I'm going to try to drag this coordinate down here where you can see it. Okay, in our case we are, are we looking for the answer of the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? And yeah, we were looking for the x-coordinate. And so it is telling us that this is going to happen at, if I can get it to move out of the way, 4.11 years. Now you may recall this coordinate's limited to showing you only three significant digits. Okay, for right now we can actually see the answer, but I want to remind you how to do this as well. If you get an answer that you can't see, you, it's gone to scientific notation, like the y coordinate here, 5e plus 4, that's 5 times 10 to the fourth power. How do I get it to switch so I can see the whole number? If I point to the number, get my hand over that number, you'll notice it's kind of turned gray now, and I right click, and on here right click is control menu. Does anyone remember what we pick to get it to change this so we can see more digits? And yes, it would be number two attributes. And the little box pops over here, you see these funky green arrows? Click on the right hand one to make it go up to show you more digits. And you'll notice it's changed now. As soon as I hit escape and get that out of the way, oops, well, I guess I needed to hit enter, sorry. Try that again. Right click, attributes, up. I guess I need to press enter so it sticks. Now I can see, yes, that it's 50,000. So you may need to use attributes to solve some of your problems. But there we have an answer. Uh, in this case, I probably would have been content with 4.1 years, but this is good. And so they will usually indicate how many decimals they want you to round to. All right, there's the thrills and excitement of exponential functions. Logarithms coming soon.